Hello, this is episode... I can't remember. We're talking about amplifiers today. It is absolutely important for you to know what an amplifier is and what distinguishes a quality amplifier from one that's not. I'm going to start with what an amplifier is. We're talking big picture here. An amp is anything that takes something small and makes it larger. So that could be like me inflating a balloon. I am amplifying the size of the balloon. Okay, the type of amplifiers we're talking about today are power amplifiers. The amplifiers that you use in your car are power amplifiers. Basically what they do is they take the signal from your head unit, your radio, head unit, they amplify that signal. They increase the amplitude or the size of that signal until it's big enough to power speakers or a subwoofer. That's what your amp is doing. It takes the signal and it takes power from your car, combines it, and makes a big signal. This old-fashioned Alpine amplifier is an example. On one side you have the inputs for your signal from your head unit and on the other side you you have inputs for the power from your car and then you have outputs for speakers which which are receiving the stronger signal in the end on to a little bit of a controversial topic there are two basic classes or types of amplifiers that are on the market today these these are not the only two but they're the lar they're the two biggest categories the first is class AB this is I guess you could say the traditional way amplifiers were created for car audio. A lot of people who have run car stereos for years swear that this is the best technology for sound quality. This Alpine amplifier is a class AB amplifier. It's the traditional technology. The second type of car amplifier that you need to be aware of is a class D amplifier. This is much newer technology within the last 10 or 15 years and it is much more efficient than class AB. Class D amplifiers in general pull less power from your car, don't get as hot, they make pow more power for the same price, and they're smaller. And so for those reasons, I think when you're looking for an amplifier to put in a car, a class D amplifier should be your first choice. Not just because it, it's, it's cheaper, but also because it's, it's more safe. Amplifiers commonly have one, two, four, or five channels. A channel is simply a place to put a, uh, to attach a speaker or uh, to hook up a speaker at. That's a channel. That's one positive and one negative for, to hook up a speaker. One channel amplifiers are called mono amplifiers. Mono amplifiers are almost exclusively used just for subwoofers. Two and four channel amps are typically used for speakers uh, but can be used for a subwoofer. They can be used for either or. And then a five channel amp has four speaker um, four speaker plugins and then one set aside for the subwoofer. This Alpine amplifier has four sets of positive and negative speaker terminals. This makes this a four channel amp. All else being equal one and two channel amplifiers are cheaper and four or five channel amplifiers are a little more expensive but that is all else being equal there are plenty of exceptions so do your own research it's very hard to tell from the outside whether an amp is a quality amplifier or not what a lot of people used to do to see the relative quality of an amplifier was to see how heavy the thing was. Nowadays, Class D amps are much lighter than the old ones because they don't need to be as heavy. They don't need as many heat sinks. Why, you ask? Why don't they need heat sinks? Because they don't get as hot. Because they're more efficient. So what is a good amp? The thing is, you can't trust most car audio companies, their numbers or their specifications. A lot of amps that are 2006 CEA compliant have failed third-party testing. There isn't any sort of government regulation on the lying here like there is for food labels or a speeding ticket. You know, they don't regulate what car audio companies claim. Here's how you can root out the good from the bad. There are two ways that are realistic or effective for most people. If you want to know 
whether the amp you have really does the power that it says it'll do on the label, go to YouTube. Yes, I said YouTube, you know, where you're watching this video, and look up a professional, and I'm just going to use an example here, like Steve Mead of Steve Mead Designs, and you want to look up a video, you want to look up something called a bench test, an amplifier bench test. You can find uh, results from amplifier bench tests in other places online. I think YouTube is the most convenient. Bench tests are usually very revealing and are a great way to root out the good from the bad. The other thing you can do is educate yourself a bit on the inner workings of an amplifier and go around the internet looking for gut shots of your amp or the inside of an amp. You want to look at the circuitry in there and you don't really have to be a tech head to uh, to figure it out. Generally if there's more stuff in there it, there's a possibility that it will make more power. Big high temperature capacitors and lots of coils are a good thing as far as I know. Uh, I'm not a tech I'm not a tech head. I don't know all about it, but that's that seems like a general rule of thumb to follow. The more stuff that's in there, the more power it can make. If you're buying an amplifier online, a reasonable price to pay for a quality product would be between a hundred and two hundred dollars. That price range can vary um, based on how much power you're looking for. You know, for just a simple little 100 to 300 watt amplifier like, like this Alpine here, which is a very, very low power amplifier for these days, you know, you might end up spending only 80 bucks or 75. And if you have a 1500 watt subwoofer amp to power or 215s or something wild like that, uh, you may have to spend 220, 230 dollars. You know, but it's all it's all close to that price range if you just want to find something budget friendly that works. Good. So this is all I have for amps really. I'm not a technical genius, but hopefully you got something out of this and you kind of have a clue of what you're looking for now. Good luck finding the right product for you and your application. Uh, my next video is going to be about installing amplifiers or preparing wiring amplifiers getting them installed because that's a pretty general procedure please feel free to ask questions because I will do my best to answer them and subscribe if you want more car audio information